should be done regardless. It should be done regardless. It should be regardless of, uh, regardless of what needs to be done. There's a tough one, isn't it? Regardless of what needs to be done. Do whatever it takes to serve other people. And sometimes it's a really crummy job, isn't it? Sometimes when people need the help the most is when, when you say, I'm out of this one, I ain't going to do that. I don't want to help out there because that is gross. Right? I know the little quest septic tank went out. And um, I texted him the other day. And as I'm pulling out my phone, text him, I'm like, dear God, <laughs> I need to offer. So I, I texted and I said, hey, Quincy, happy to help. Ah, delete, delete, delete. Not happy. No. <laughs> it's the wrong word. I'm sure that you have other help. No, that's, I don't know if I should put that in there. Ah, what are you thinking anyway? You know, so I don't remember what I said. I sent it and they said, well, we actually got some people I think take care of. I said, praise Jesus, I love it. I do not want to climb in a septic tank, but your God, if you make me, I'll do it. I'll do it. Wear one of those full body Tyvek suits, you know? I tell you, you got to do it regardless of what needs to be done. Sometimes there's some dirty jobs out there. Let me tell you, there's a story in John 13 where Jesus washed some feet. and He says, if then your Lord and Master, having washed your feet, you also ought to wash another one, another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, he says, I say unto you that the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Happy are you if you wash someone's feet. Now, I don't know about you. You ever wash someone's feet? Any of you have had a pedicure? Don't, if you're a man, don't you raise your hand. Don't do it. How many of you women have had a pedicure? They scrub your feet and clean your feet. How many of you men have had a massage? I've ha- I actually have had a foot massage, a professional foot. I love foot massages. My wife's little frail hands, they can't work them hard enough. Now, I tried to give her foot massage, but she squirms all around. Don't touch my feet. Don't touch my feet. I like a good foot massage, though. And I remember I went in to get a professional foot massage, and they, they got to wash your feet. They, I mean, my feet. I mean, I, I take a shower. I, mean, I didn't think my feet smelled, but I think this is routine. Anyway, they wash your feet. I couldn't help but to think as this, uh, this individual is there scrubbing, washing the feet. Very, very humbling. As I was watching someone wash my feet. Now, I'm not, they're not doing it for free. I promise you that. And believe me, I gave them a huge tip. I probably made their day. But let me tell you what. A lot of things were going through my mind as I was watching someone else wash my feet. Now, listen, we don't have a foot washing ceremony in this church although I was going to start one. <laughs> I want to show you how it's done here. No, I'm just kidding. Here's the thing. You do it regardless of what needs to be done. Sometimes there's some really dirty jobs that just need to be done. Sometimes it's washing feet. Sometimes it's cleaning a septic tank. Sometimes it's scrubbing a toilet. I can't tell you how many times I've washed the toilet here. But you know what? It's not about me. And you do it regardless of what's asked. You do it regardless of who gets the credit. This is a big one. Regardless of who gets the credit. That's the toughest thing about serving, isn't it? When someone else gets the credit for something you've done. John 4, 36 says, And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that, is, is, is that saying true. One soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor, but men labored, and you are entered into their labors. You know what this is saying? We need to do what needs to be done even if we don't get the credit. But you know what? We're still going to be, we're still going to be rewarded for that. Sometimes it's hard to do so. How many of you had to do that? You know, it's funny. I, 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 have, this, I have this thing. I have this book, and it's, it's really, there's a lot, of, a lot of, it's kind of funny, really, in my mind. Because the only thing that you see on this book is my name, and I didn't do anything of this. This, this, this is not my 
uh, brainchild. This, this belongs to Joel. This belongs to Rebecca and to Lydia and to other people and to Dana. This is not, and you know who gets the credit? Me. And I can't write a big enough acknowledgement in the back of this book to let my staff, my team, know how much I appreciate them. I can't mean it. And I, and I, tell, you, I tell you what, this is no joke. As I, as I wrote that, I shed a tear. Because it's not about me. It's not about me getting the credit. But you know what? It's not about them getting the credit either. And they know that. And sometimes we just have to do something regardless of who gets the credit. Here's a great quote by Ronald Reagan. There's no limit to the amount of good you can do if you don't care who gets the credit. You can do a lot of good if you're not the one saying, but I did it. I'm the one. If you just allow other people to take the credit, just allow people, it doesn't matter about you. If it's in love and you have the right perspective and you help who you can, when you can, and you help them, you help them rapidly and regularly and you help them regardless, friends, these are awesome principles you can apply to your life and you will be a happy Christian because you and me He's going to say this. God could have used anybody. He could use anybody to take out the trash. He could use anybody to write a book. He could use anybody to preach from this pulpit. Be thankful that God uses you. But who cares who gets the credit? If it glorifies God, that's what it's about. It's about God taking the credit. Now let me say this in conclusion. God is not a forgetful God. Okay? God is not a forgetful God. In Hebrews 6, 10, it says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. The work that you do will be rewarded. This isn't a consolation prize. This isn't, this isn't a consolation prize. This is the crown that God is going to reward all of us for partaking in, and even in the most insignificant labor. One man sows and another reaps, but they both join in together and they receive the, they receive the crown, the reward. That is amazing. It's not about me. It's not about me. I don't ever want you to worship me. I don't ever want you to say, Hooray, Pastor, just go. I mean, I need your help. I need you to hold up my arms and help me to charge forward. But at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about you guys. And you'll be a happy Christian if you go out there and you just serve. You got to prepare for this stuff, you got to come ready to work. I don't know how many of you walk around with uh, invite cards to church in your pocket. I don't know how many of you leave your house without your, without your phone, your keys. I know you've all done it. I, I've got the system. Keys, wallet, phone, gun. Keys, wallet, phone, gun. Keys, wallet, phone, gun. That's what I say to myself. I turn off the lights, keys, wallet, phone, gun. Oh, got to go grab my phone. I go back. Because I'm prepared. We ought to be prepared to serve other people. And God's not going to forget your labor of love. He's not going to forget. You'll be rewarded. A lot of times we do things we don't receive the credit. The Lord did that. The Lord did a lot of things he never received the credit for. He died on the cross. And you know, many, many, many people reject him and his work. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came to this earth to die for you in your place to give you eternal life. And you know what? Very rarely is he ever received appreciation for that. We all owe a debt that he paid. Imagine that. We're not going to sing it right this second, but there's this great song. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. 
Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Jesus Christ came to this earth to pay a debt that he didn't owe to give you a reward you don't deserve. I want this hand right here to represent you and me. I want this wallet to represent all of our sin, all the bad things we've done. Some churches say, turn over a new leaf or head a different direction. They say, get baptized, walk an aisle, give money, pray a prayer, join a church. They say all these things. But the Bible says that the wages of sin is not church membership. The wages of sin is death. Someone had to make a sacrifice. The wages of sin is death. Someone had to die. And 2,000 years ago, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the suffering servant, came to this earth to serve. And he gave his life as a ransom. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay the debt that you owe. Now friends, if that doesn't get your wood wet, or fire, get your wood on fire, your wood's wet or something, hasn't it? Friends, he died for us. And so many people overlook that and they're not appreciative. They're not appreciative of what Jesus Christ did for you. No greater love hath any man than this and that a man lay down his life for his friend. And Jesus died here on the cross. And by simple faith alone in Jesus Christ alone, we can have eternal life in heaven. Jesus died to give us something that we didn't deserve. And we should be thankful. And the best way to say thanks is by just receiving the free gift of salvation. It's when you in the quietness of your mind say, Lord, the best I know how, I believe. I'm trusting, depending, relying on you for salvation. I believe, Lord, that you died on the cross to pay for my sins, not as just a historical fact, but trusting him that he died for you.